America, and welcome to the program. Today and tomorrow, I want to talk to you about something really important. I'm, um, I'm, reading, a, uh, I'm reading a book called Crisis of Responsibility. You should read it. It's really good. The second half may be crap. I, I'm not that f- I haven't finished it yet, so I really don't know what I'm talking about. But a couple of ideas came to me as I was reading it the other day. Um, nobody's taking responsibility on anything, and we're blaming everything except where the blame really uh, falls. And as I was looking through playing the blame game, as I'm looking through all of this, I thought to myself, you know, I know what the problem is now. I, I really understand what the problem is, and it's really easily identifiable. So the next couple of days, we want to talk about that. It, it, it is the core of what our national problem is, because we are approaching all of our problems with the same general attitude or solution. Um, ultimately, this is a constitutional issue, but if we are going to get better, we have to decide what our principles are. We have to decide, do we believe in the Bill of Rights anymore? Are the Bill of Rights important or not? For starters, let's look at the gun debate. We've been having this now for the last few weeks in the aftermath of school shooting in Parkland, Florida. It hasn't actually been much of a debate. It's most, mostly polar opposite sides, you know, just digging in and defending their position. There is no period of mourning after these tragedies, no time to gain any perspective. Instead, we immediately leap to blame. It's the guns, it's the police, it's mental health, it's politicians, it's the NRA, and so on and so on and so on. So hold on. Pre- so so right now, in the, name, in, the name, in the name of 17 people, you cannot ask the NRA to keep their money out of your campaign? I think in the name of 17 people... I can pledge to you that I will support any law that will prevent a killer like this No, but I'm talking getting NRA money. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing how everything is just black and white. The overall cry you hear about guns um, and trying to prevent these horrible things, these mass shootings, the cry is, we've got to do something. This is the same cry over and over again. This is the pattern that we've been following across the board at least in the last 18 years. When the World Trade Center, we got to do something. When people started sending stuff in the mail, we got to do something. The airports, we got to do something. Terrorists here, we got to do something. Look at the history of our country's problems over the last 20 years. And where do we really place blame? Our favorite scapegoats are, of course, politicians or the political parties, because they're, they're corrupt, they're stupid, they're too partisan, they're extremist. They don't care about us. They only care about themselves. So politicians, okay? How about the 2008 meltdown? What did we do? The whole thing was Wall Street's fault. It was Wall Street's fault. It was the bank's fault because they were greedy. You know, we didn't take a look at the bigger, more complicated picture. The problem was all down to the fact that Wall Street is run by a bunch of slick, greed is good, Gordon geckos who just want to get rich at your expense. We blame the corporations because they're greedy. They don't care about people. They don't care about jobs. They don't care about the environment. The media, we're blaming them. It's fake news. They're all hypocrites. They're pushing an agenda. They're dividing us. Blame religion. Islam, terrorism. Jews, Palestinians. Christians, they supported Trump. No matter which side you're on, we have found a way to blame something or some group. We blame capitalism for keeping down the little guy. We blame the policy that restricts capitalism. We blame socialism for pushing us towards the welfare state. We blame the educators, the educational system, our teachers and our schools are terrible. Let's blame the unions. Colleges are greedy because tuition is way too high. They're elitist, and you know what they're doing? They're pushing progressive agendas. I want you to know, all of these things have an essence of truth. Healthcare. Just had this conversation with my daughter the other day. Healthcare. Dad, I remember when we had good health care, and I said, I know, this is still the best health care we can buy now. So it's still the best we can afford for the company. I know, but it used to be so much better. It's the government. I said, yeah, 
Do you remember all your friends when you were in college said it wasn't the government, it was the insurance companies, or it was the hospitals, or I remember the President of the United States getting on and saying there are doctors in this country that are cutting the feet off of people to make more money. Do you remember that? They're all conspiring together to keep health care crazy expensive. We're blaming guns, you know, because they have minds of their own. They commit horrible crimes. And finally, as a catch-all, we blame government. Now, I love this one because I think we have what I like to call a snow white government. Oh, what a racist. Snow white government. Have you noticed there are three main groups that blame the government? The first group is the government is way too big. Too many departments, too expensive, too much waste. The second group, the government is too small. The government, you know, could and should be doing a lot more for you. And the third group says, it's really just kind of just right, except it's ineffective and corrupt. Have you noticed all three of those groups are united now? Because all three of those groups, everybody in America is like, we know the government is at fault. There's something wrong. And so we as a people strangely have united behind the idea of burn the whole system down. Just burn it down to the ground. We don't need it. Drain the swamp. Well, there's a baby in there. There's a baby. I don't want to burn the entire system down. So what do we do? Well, you know we better do something. So what is that something? Well, we have the blame part. We're experts at that. But there's a major thing missing from this blame list. I mean, you can add all kinds of stuff. But the biggest thing that is missing off of this list us. Who is the government? We, the people. Okay, now hear me out. We don't take responsibility for anything on this blame list. Okay? I'm not a politician, but you know what? I help hire the politicians, and so do you. Wall Street, they're just greedy. Wall Street people come from us. They're, they're us. They're our kids. They're our fathers. Corporations, they're us. Religion, the media, capitalism. Do you notice we don't have social media there? We blame the media for all sorts of things. And yet, we continue to pay for it. We continue to consume it. We blame religion. But we're the ones doing things in the name of our religion. Blame the politicians. We vote them in office. Or don't vote at all. And then point fingers. Media? Social media. How come they're not on the list? Well, actually they are. But have you noticed we're blaming Facebook or Twitter? They got to do something. They got to do something about all this fake news. They have to do something about all this vitriol. Why are we blaming the platform? It's like going to a Broadway show that sucks and not talking about the play, the playwright, the actors, nothing. That damn stage. They better do something about that stage. Facebook and Twitter is a platform. It is only a reflection of us. And yet we don't blame ourselves for any of it. There's no personal responsibility. We haven't taken the blame on ourselves. And I know each side wants to say, well, I didn't start it. I don't care. Have you ever been with your kids and they're both arguing and they're like, he started it. I don't care. Shut up, both of you. With each one of these areas, there's always an urgency because things are getting more and more out of control and people are rising up because they have a right to do and to say, we got to do something to fix the crisis. And by we, we mean you, the politicians, because we didn't have anything to do with all creating all this crisis. It's you, the politicians, and I don't have any power to fix it. So eventually, and often very slowly, the politicians finally do do something. And we cheer, or we scream out loud, or we're silent. But what are the politicians doing? I don't think, 
I don't think we've really noticed how the tables have been turned on us. Or maybe perhaps we don't care that the tables are being turned on us. They're finally doing something to fix the problem, and they know where that blame lies. But we should absolutely care. Because I've just figured out who they're blaming. It's not the gun. It's you. It's, it's not the gun. We've got to take guns away from everybody. Oh, sure, it's the bad guys, but we don't know who the bad guys are. It's not the press. It's not just the Nazis or the communists abusing free speech. We don't trust anybody. We better look at that right. When we get panicked and demand something be done to fix a problem, the solutions often end up violating something that we know nothing about anymore. The Bill of Rights. What's crazy about this, this is not some obscure provision. It's the Bill of Rights. And this was not something that was hard for them to work out. The the real truth on the Bill of Rights is it was kind of an afterthought. It was one of those things where they drew up the Constitution and all of the states were like, yeah, I don't trust you. You look pretty shifty. We know what politicians are like. And so they got together in Washington and they said, okay, all right, let's make a list, not of the people's rights, but let's just make a list. What are the people concerned about? Well, they're concerned that you're going to say that a certain religion is going to be in charge. Okay, write that down. Uh, That you're going to take away their right to free speech. Write that down. You're going to take their guns. Write it down. That's what this is. This is, look, guys. I'm tired of having this argument over and over again. We all know the government doesn't have the right to do any of these things, so we've written it down, the Bill of Rights. These things will never be violated. This is the true sickness in our society. The erosion of this. Because we the people don't care anymore. The more we say we have to do something the more danger it poses to our individual and fundamental freedoms. And I'll show you how next. Do we value the Bill of Rights anymore? On the whole, I I don't think we do. I'll show you that. I'm going to really line this out tomorrow. But forget about valuing the Bill of Rights. Do we even know what it is? There is a ton of research that makes it really clear that for a disturbing percentage of America, the answer is nope. In 2017, Annenberg Constitution Day Civic Survey asked people if they can name any specific rights that are guaranteed by the First Amendment of the Constitution. 48% named freedom of speech. 37 couldn't name a single First Amendment right. There's five, by the way. Another question on the survey said, do you happen to know the three branches of government? Only 26% could name all three branches. 27% could name one branch. That's a stump. 33% couldn't name any branches. This survey, of course, you know, no big deal. It was talking to kids. Either that or they were adults. It was a survey of over 1,000 American adults sampled from all 50 states. None of us know the Bill of Rights, and it's getting worse rapidly. We don't understand what a precarious situation we are now in because of our poor basic civil knowledge. At the level of basic civics, we have a crisis in this country that the next generation doesn't understand the American idea. 41% of Americans under age 35 tell pollsters they think the First Amendment is dangerous. On the left, you got a whole bunch of people who are disinterested in religious liberty. Polling now tells us that on the right, you got a whole bunch of people that are disinterested in freedom of the press. Well, those freedoms, the five freedoms of the First Amendment, religion, press, speech, assembly, protest, they're all bundled up as one thing. We haven't taught civics in this country for 40 or 50 years, and right now we're not doing a better job of that. I'm telling you, this is going to be, this is going to be huge soon, because it's the one thing we agree on, the Bill of Rights. But we don't know them, and so we're vulnerable. In FDR's 1944 State of the Union Address, he proposed a second Bill of Rights. He said, quote, necessitous men, meaning poor people, are not free men. 
FDR went on to say this new Bill of Rights must provide a new basis of security and prosperity. For every person, it would include a job, a home, medical care, protection in old age, sickness, accident, and unemployment. Oh, and also a good education. That's the Bernie Sanders platform. It also is the Soviet Union's constitution. Now, this is the same FDR who, during his second term in office, tried to add six more justices to the Supreme Court so they would support his New Deal factory in the White House as it churned out all kinds of programs. Fortunately, his court packing plan got shot down by Congress, but who's to say some charismatic fascist won't try to pull something like that again? Or convince Americans that they need a new, improved Bill of Rights? If we don't understand what we have, we won't know how to protect it. That's a dangerous place that America is finding itself in today. The Bill of Rights should be what brings the left and the right together. And I contend it actually is. But we need to start having conversations about this with each other. We should all be able to rally around the Bill of Rights because it is the best secular hope that we have in the face of so many radical anti-American political forces, left and right, at work. The Bill of Rights was a gift from our founders to all future generations of American. Uh, when we were doing the research, a, a huge portion of Americans don't understand that America would not exist without the Bill of Rights. As well designed as the Constitution is, it wouldn't have been ratified by the states without the promise that the very first action the first Congress would do would be to pass a Bill of Rights. Now, these rights are simply fundamental to our nation. But without them, we cease to exist. Since this is the reality of the Bill of Rights' importance, why don't we know it and why are we so lax in defending it? And what has been done? Part of it is that starting with FDR, America became conditioned throughout the 20th century to turn to things to be fixed to the government. This was a seismic shift in the American psyche. We were a nation of rugged individualists, pulling ourselves up by our own bootstraps, tackling our own problems, making our way. Think of the Great Plains, the farmer in the late 1800s living in his sawed house. Do you think he waited around for the government to fix things? But beginning with the New Deal, then LBJ's Great Society programs of the 1960s, all the way to Obamacare, there is a clear through line of an encroaching nanny state. Combine that with all of the presidential overreach from both the Republicans and the Democrats, especially during times of crisis, and the new American expectation is that government is the solution. The lie is we think that some problems are just so big, so unique, so tragic, that something has to be done. And it can only be solved by the federal government. And that if all the new federal laws erode or even severs one of our basic fundamental freedoms in the Bill of Rights, well, then that's fine. It's just the collective sacrifice that we have to make to be safe or more inclusive. No, the Bill of Rights is non-negotiable, all of it. But that's not how we treat it. Now, with every new threat, we cast blame instead of shouldering the responsibility for our role. And we march and we make t-shirts and hashtags demanding that something should be done. The government finally responds, but how does it respond? It blames us, the people, in the solution that we've begged for. So it takes away the right of everyone because of a few bad apples. This is a dream scenario for progressives. Crisis, coupled with the people's ignorance about their basic rights, allows progressives to trample these rights. Now, progressives are certain that they know what's best for everybody. Now, progressives, remember, are on the left and the right of our current political spectrum. When we say we've got to do something, progressives, left or right, step in and give the people what we think we want. We just don't really look at what they've done and we don't realize the side effects listed in the background. You know, little things like canceling parts of the Bill of Rights. That's what Democrats have already done in the gun control bill. They've slapped it together in a response from a handful of teenagers in Parkland, Florida, crying out, we have to do something. Because progressives 
know better than you who should have guns. They know who should be licensed as real news media. They know who should have a voice. They, they know who should run a bank. They know which banks are too big to fail. Which doctor is good for you? They don't know any of that stuff. That's not American. To fix this system, we have to shoulder our own blame because we are the politicians. We elect them. We are Wall Street. We are the banks. We are the corporations. We are the media by what we consume and do on social media. We are religion. We've just gone off the rails of personal responsibility. And because we've played the blame game and we continually turn around and look at the government in in a time of crisis and say, we've got to do something, our government has taken its dull scissors to the rights that are supposed to be untouchable. Has anybody noticed that the last three presidents have either been called a fascist or a communist? George W. Bush was a fascist. Obama was a communist. Now Trump, he's a fascist. Why? Because Americans know that they have certain rights that belong to them, but they don't even know them. I've got rights, you know. Can you name them? And in their own way, each president has eroded parts of the Bill of Rights or threatened to. So the door to the abuse of the Bill of Rights has swung wide open. And there are plenty of groups and individuals ready to rush in. The alt-right, socialists, Antifa, Occupy Wall Street, Bernie Sanders. The list is growing. But the solution to our problems is not to cancel out the Bill of Rights. But that is exactly what we're allowing to happen in an all-out effort to fix things because something has to be done. Tomorrow, I'm going to take you through the first 10 of the Bill of Rights. I'm going to show you the first 10 freedoms and show you how every single one of these have been violated in the last 10 years. Every one. And it's happening more and more often. Once you realize that our problems are caused by our solutions, maybe we can fix things. That's next time.